very good afternoon to one and all. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Victor. I'm the Senior Manager from uh, Jurong Point Learning Centre and I'll be your MC for this afternoon. Before we start the seminar, uh, let me go through some house rules. Do ensure that you have a strong internet connection. Check that the volume of your devices uh, is audible for you. And in addition, should you have any questions at any point in time that's relevant to this webinar, our Q&A session will be at the end of the talk and this will be conducted for about 10 to 15 minutes. Our speakers from DAS Academy and our learning centers will be present to answer your questions live. If you're interested in any of our courses and workshops related to this talk, we'll be featuring the upcoming courses and, and there will be links that will be posted in the chat box for your reference. Without further ado, please sit back and enjoy the talk and we'll see you shortly again. Hello everyone. Hope all of you have been keeping well. Welcome to the fifth webinar. I am Siti Asjamia, Lead Educational Therapist based at Tampines Learning Centre. I am also an Associate Lecturer at the DS Academy. It gives me great pleasure today to be sharing with you some tips on how you can support learners who struggle or are reluctant to write through this session um, entitled Learn to Write with the Right Approach. Okay, so this is what we'll be covering today. Now, a lot of us actually know what writing is, but um, have probably not asked ourselves what kind of cognitive processes and skills go into the task of writing, right? Um, why is this important? An awareness of these skills and proce processes will allow us to better understand why learners with dyslexia struggle with writing and demonstrate certain traits and behaviours. Okay, uh, like it or not, writing is an essential aspect of communication. It's a practical life skill that all of us need to have for day-to-day -day living. And so it is so important for us to equip our learners uh, with skills to write, okay? Okay, so before we could actually talk about writing, what exactly is writing? So according to Hacker, Keener and Kircher, writing comprises several processes, beginning with the production of thought or an idea, okay? This uh, production of thought and idea is usually directed by a specific goal, a specific purpose that could be individual in nature, that is to probably fulfill a personal need or uh, to serve as an emotional outlet, okay? If you, if you see people writing in a personal diary or journal entry, okay, this is satisfying a personal need. But uh, it could also be uh, used to express, to advocate a certain opinion, to relate and appeal to others as well. So uh, this can also, writing can also be a social activity. Okay. So, but ideas and thoughts would not be meaningful to the audience if they do not adhere to a certain agreed or widely understood conventions of language. Okay. So this is where monitoring um, and controlling of structure and grammatical rules come into the picture. So ideas and thoughts will remain to be just um, symbols or words if um, the message or the contextual meaning is not effectively conveyed. And to do that, uh, we need to abide by certain structures and rules, okay? So this are then eventually translated on paper uh, through the use of uh, symbolic representations, okay? So in this case, it's the, either the, the use of um, letters of the alphabet or symbols of language, okay? To sum it all up, okay, uh, in, in uh, quite simply, writing is the process of using symbols that is letters of the alphabet, punctuation, um, et cetera, to communicate thoughts and ideas in a readable form, okay? So what does it take to write? Well, lots of multitasking. So in addition to thinking about ideas, learners have to pay attention to structure as well. So every text type demands a unique structural form, okay? For example, writing a story would be different from writing a report. 
okay? If the purpose of writing stories is to engage the audience, okay, through the use of uh, figurative speech devices, uh, 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 with the purpose of getting the audience uh, to be involved in the story, to be immersed in the story, um, writing a report has to be um, as succinct as possible. Okay, as brief as possible, paying attention to just uh, the essential details with uh, no frills, all right? Um, poems have certain unique structures as well. And um, we can always recognize what recipes look like just by looking at how the content is organized, right? But, you know, is this all that we have to be concerned about when we write? Now, before any learner could be engaged in a writing task, it is important that he or she is fully aware of the goals of that writing task, okay, in terms of expectations. Is this, is it a story that he's writing? Is it a letter that he is writing? Um, is there a minimum word count? Is there a time duration given for the writing task? Okay, so if it's a, if a time duration is given, this means that the learner would have to maintain his or her focus on the task, all right? Now, when we talk about focus, sustained focus, always think about learners with ADHD. Okay, what kind of issues would they have in the writing task, all right? We also have to think about content, okay? What, uh, what can I write about? What, um, what ideas can I think of, okay? Uh, we also have to think about who am I writing this for, okay? As um, I mentioned earlier, writing a report is quite different from writing a story. We also have to think about how to organize. I've got these ideas, but how do I put them together in a logical form that readers can understand? We also think there are some uh, learners with dyslexia with issues uh, coming up with the right words, okay? Um, due to a lack of reading exposure, some of them may not have, um, uh, may not have acquired uh, a, a range of vocabulary that they can access, okay, in order to be able to use in their writing. And then we are, uh, they also struggle with spelling as well, okay? If they've got the words, but they just don't know how to spell, okay, that will affect writing as well, okay? If they already struggle with spelling, they will also struggle with grammar as well because if they struggle with applying spelling rules, they may also struggle with applying grammatical rules. Okay, if they do not have sufficient uh, practice, um, sufficient automaticity in terms of spelling and the application of grammatical rules, how would we expect them to be able to edit their work? All right, so apart from all this, there's also, there are also um, some writers with issues, um, with handwriting issues, penmanship issues, okay? So these are the many um, items that writers, um, even writers like us, have to think about when we engage in writing tasks. Okay, so challenges with working memory, organization, uh, remembering spelling and grammatical rules are usually observed in the products of um, their writing and writing behaviors. Okay, um, most of them are observed not to be using graphic organizers to plan. They will usually um, write what they can remember at the point of time, write what comes to mind at the point of time. Okay, so this explains why some of the ideas may appear to be quite disjointed and the flow is rather choppy uh, with lots of gaps in between. Okay, often readers are left with lots of questions. You know, what happens? Um, this is not mentioned, that is not mentioned. How do I know uh, whether the character um, has done this or has done that? All right. And then uh, they also struggle, as mentioned, uh, struggle with uh, grammar. Okay, um, they will usually write um, simple or incomplete sentences, uh, run-on sentences where um, they do not put full stops or fragmented sentences where they put full stops in the wrong places, okay? And then for most of them, their written expression often sounds like the way they speak, all right? So yes, um, scanty ideas uh, because of the lack of vocabulary, um, maybe lack of knowledge in terms of uh, sentence structure, their ideas tend to be very scanty, very brief, very direct with not much details, okay? Um, some of them with um, who may not have uh, um, ideas to write may take a long time to start, okay? They, do, they just don't know how to get started. Uh, some of them may totally avoid the task altogether. They may create excuses not to be engaged. And uh, yes, they'll always say, I don't know what to write. Okay. So 
Yeah. So what you see here in their writing is actually a manifestation of what we call cognitive overload. All right. So what is cognitive overload? Okay. Uh, it is a situation where the learner is mentally overwhelmed as a result of having to attend to or remember too much information or too many tasks sim simultaneously, okay? resulting in the learner being unable to um, process information and execute the related task efficiently. So when a learner with dyslexia who has yet to acquire reasonable spelling and grammatical skills, the language processing demands of a writing task may be beyond what he is capable of processing at that point of time. Okay, okay? so this sometimes produces what we call um, anxiety and stress that can affect learning and motivation. Okay, so this produces some of the common behaviors you see in learners with dyslexia when it comes to writing, such as anxiety. Okay, so this happens when there's a mismatch, okay, of the child's actual ability with his or her own expectations of performance. All right, um, uh, it could also be due to a fear of a time test, fear of not being able to complete a task. It could be due to fear of a fear of negative feedback, receiving negative feedback. Uh, it could be due to low self confidence uh, or poor linguistic knowledge. Okay, all this can actually trigger lots of stress and anxiety. We also have learners who don't know what to write. Okay, they are stuck there uh, with no ideas. Then on the other hand, we also have learners who have just too many ideas, all right? Uh, these are learners who are able to express their ideas and verbalize their ideas, okay? And contribute a lot of, uh, a lot of ideas in class, but they struggle to write, all right? So if they have too many ideas, uh, they may have difficulty trying to put them in the right order. Right? Some of them may not know how and where to start. Okay? And for many of them, okay, um, they generally struggle with everything. So basically, um, writing for these learners is a mentally and physically tiring task. Okay? Um, I cannot write properly. I don't know what to write. So I will not write. So, so if, if with, with um, difficulties um, and um, with a lack of motivation, so this um, affects uh, the attitudes towards writing, okay? All right, so the right approach is actually an acronym which I coined to represent four stages of support that you can provide struggling writers. Okay, the, so this approach would work best if learners at the very least have a firm awareness of what a basic sentence structure looks like. Okay, so for example, um, learners should at least know that a basic sentence structure begins with a capital letter consisting of a subject and a predicate Okay, ends and ends with a full stop. Okay, so because learners with dyslexia tend to be cognitively overloaded, we want to reduce that load. Okay, so R stands for reduce cognitive load. Okay, I stands for imagine without borders. So when we reduce that load to focus on just one or two items, we can actually free up that space, that mental space to focus on imagination and creativity. Okay, so once the ideas are there, we can then help them to bring those ideas together by organizing them to present a logical structure. So T is for tie ideas together. So once the ideas um, are there, are up, okay, uh, once the structure is up, that's when we can enhance and add more depth to the content using details like adjectives, adverbs, and connectors. Now, but of course, okay, the road is not always a smooth one. Just getting started is usually the toughest. Personally, I always like to encourage myself and my students with this quote from Stephen King. The scariest moment is always just before you start. After that, things can only get better. Okay. All right. So it would help if you could bear in mind that the goals of the right approach are primarily to encourage 
uh, to entice and encourage the learner, to motivate the, the, the child to be involved and engage in the writing process. Okay. Um, secondly, to reduce or minimize frustration. Okay, so let the child be assured that he or she will have your support. Okay, you can actually help by being a co-constructor, uh, by um, helping with spelling, helping with scribing their thought processes, uh, using technology, using tech apps, and helping them to break down and simplify the writing process, make it simpler for them to start, right? We also want the learner to develop a good awareness of basic structure or basic narrative writing structure and then use this knowledge to um, self-monitor or probably engage in self-talk okay to help them keep track of what they need to look out for in the process of writing so eventually we will want them to be able to gradually develop independence and self-confidence okay so for a start to help reduce that load okay you have to be with them Okay, when they are attempting a writing task. As a partner, okay, your role is to scaffold, to ask questions, and to scribe. Okay, so where possible, use tactile materials such as post-it notes okay, to jot down ideas. Right? So because post-it notes come in very small square pieces, right? it is actually less intim intimidating as compared to a large A4 size paper with lots of lines. Okay, so the, the visuals actually help to reduce the stress, all right? So you can actually also use um, speech-to-text apps, okay, to help with spelling. So at this stage, um, the focus is really to just brainstorm ideas. That's it, all right? Okay, so if you remember this poor boy who struggled with having to attend to so many things, okay, we are going to reduce that to just focus on two items okay if you notice there that i've highlighted two bubbles in yellow okay so what are those bubbles content and organization so i am not saying that we should be ignoring the rest okay uh, what i'm saying is that we will deal with them later one at a time as we go along okay remember remember that we want to entice um, struggling and reluctant uh, reluctant writers to at least give it a try, give themselves a chance. Okay, so it's okay if they do if they do not provide the ideas in full sentences or have spelling and grammatical errors, it's fine. As long as we, as the partner, okay, are able to recognize the words. So if they decide to write their ideas down, we do not correct them on the spot. Okay, do not correct them, just leave them as they are and move on. All right. Remember that we are only focusing on two things: content ideas and organization okay we want to free up that mental space and energy and capacity to focus on remember imagination okay imagining and coming up with creative ideas so this is the i stage of the right approach i stands for imagine without borders okay do acknowledge and accept whatever that comes to their minds and record them accordingly okay do bear in mind that we want to keep them motivated and sustain their interest in the writing activity so recognize that every idea that they contribute has value and has potential to be developed okay all right so if there is already a topic in mind you may want to set aside two to five minutes not longer than that, all right? Two to five minutes is more than enough to just brainstorm ideas. Why such a short time frame? Well, the purpose is to keep the learners from drifting away too much and also to uh, prevent them from getting too, too distracted, okay? And um, to, to continue sustaining their interest, okay? You can ask questions, but there should not be any discussion at this point, okay? Do not try to filter those ideas yet. Um, and consider whether some ideas will be relevant or not. Uh, just accept them as they are, as they come. Okay, um, this stage is set uh, just for the learner to come up with ideas. Okay, as, um, as I have mentioned earlier, you can volunteer to either be described or uh, to and to record those ideas. But, you know, in this stage of advanced technology, there are apps that learners can use to help manage their frustrations with spelling. So what you can do is you can actually install um, speech-to-text or voice-to-text applications as an extension on Google Chrome. Okay, it's free. It looks like this. 
if it's activated, okay, you just need to click on the microphone to speak and what is said is typed out for you. Okay, there's also a similar free app that you can download on Android phones. It's called Live Transcribe, which works the same way. Okay. Now, what if we have learners who say, I don't know what to write. It's common. Okay, it's perfectly normal. It's okay. What you can do is you can use pictures, okay, to stimulate thinking and conversations. Okay. Wordless books are an excellent way to start. Okay, I'll be showing you one or two examples in the upcoming slides. How this works is that there are no words provided uh, in the book to tell the story. These books actually put the reader in the shoes of the writer, right? The reader has to tell the story based on his or her own interpretation of what is seen page after page. So I provided the link here for you to explore. Then we also have another site that provides uh, lots of writing prompts in the form of pictures as well. I have also provided you with the link for you to explore here. Okay, the next one is one of my favorites and my students too. It is called Fractured Fairy Tales. Okay, also known as Twisted Fairy Tales. Okay, readers can actually explore um, making changes to any part of a renowned fairy tale. For example, the ugly, uh, the ugly duckling, Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs, um, Goldilocks and the Three Bears, okay, in their own unique ways. For example, they can change the characters, okay, they can change the setting, they can also change the plot, the conflict or the ending. They can also tell the story from the point of view of one of the characters, okay? Uh, they can even mix and match characters from other, um, they can mix and match and combine actor, um, and characters from other uh, 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 fairy tales, okay? For example, you can have Cinderella with rumpled skin, you can have Three Little Pigs with Red Riding Hood, okay? The, the choices are endless, okay? So other than that, you can also show parts of uh, their favorite movies or movies they've never seen before, Okay, make sure you capture and hook that tension. Get them to make predictions about the endings. You can also challenge them to write their own version of the continuation of the movie and see if it matches with the original and consider which one is more interesting. Okay, um, if you have wordless books, there are also wordless movies. Okay, you can encourage them to write a simple review or write the story according to what is seen in the movie, but in their own words, okay? This can also help with memory and sequencing skills as well, okay? All right, so this is an example of a writing prompt that you can uh, locate in one of the sites I shared earlier, okay? They provide a picture um, for you to talk about, for the child to, to, to reflect and think about, and um, a topic and a question for them to consider, okay? Okay, now, this is an example of a wordless book. As I mentioned, okay, this is a sample of the cover page of a wordless book. You can also see the title there, okay, you can tell from here that there's so much scope and room for conversations and discussion about what is going on in this picture. So the beauty of um, wordless books really is, uh, it is entirely up to the reader to interpret, okay, based on the visuals that uh, they see, okay, every learner, every reader, may not interpret the visuals in quite the same way. So be prepared for some surprises, okay? Okay, so the I stage, um, the, the imagine stage, is also a good time for you to revisit and discuss the narrative writing structure that usually comes in the form of a story mountain like this, okay? So at the bottom, we have the introduction where a character or characters and setting are introduced to contextualize the story. Okay, so this is then followed by a series of events leading up to the climax or the problem and uh, before ending with a uh, resolution or solution to the problem. Okay, so ideally, every stage of the story mounted should be presented in separate paragraphs. Okay, so at the introduction stage, right, the learner should already have some idea about the plot of the story and how the characters will be involved. But you may want to ask some guiding questions with regards to the character like this, okay, to keep the learner focused on the plot, all right? To help the learner come up with um, ideas for the plot, you can also scaffold by asking um, the 5W and 1H questions, okay? Like who, where, when, what, why, and how, okay? 
Now, there, there are also other types of graphic organizers other than the Story Mountain. This is another example, uh, which um, actually has a more specific focus on the development of the character in the story. Okay. All right. Letter T in the right approach stands for tie ideas together. Okay, so now that you have all the post-it notes of ideas, okay, this is when discussion can take place, where you can help the learner to filter through the ideas, okay, which ideas would be more relevant, which ideas, you know, uh, would, would not be so relevant, where uh, uh, you can also help the learner uh, by getting them to place um, the ideas at appropriate parts of Story Mountain with the goal of putting them in a logical and sequential order, okay? There are several ways to do this, right? Uh, you can use mind maps, you can use a flowchart, or you can use clips like this, okay, to string them together, all right? Um, in the second picture here, okay, you can see that the learner has numbered the different stages of the story mountain to help him keep track of the sequence of events, okay? So your role here, in helping them with this organization of ideas actually also helps to reduce um, their cognitive load. Okay. Finally, letter E stands for enrich, okay, with adjectives, adverbs, and connectors. Okay, so this is the part where you can encourage learners to fill in details or gaps in the story using 5W1H questioning technique. Right? So this is where you can make the learner more aware that the reader does not always have the full story. So they will have to provide more information to help readers understand their story better. Okay, so for example, if they have only provided nouns, okay, on their post-its, okay, remember that um, ideas are actually very brief, they need to add adjectives to describe the nouns. Uh, they need to add verbs to describe what the nouns are doing. And adverbs to describe how um, the characters go about um, uh, doing the action, all right? If you look at the second picture on the right-hand side here, all right, uh, the post-its have different colors, all right? The green post-its describe the actions of the character. The blue post-its describe the character's emotions as they go about doing what they do, okay? So um, once that is done, you can actually add time connectors, like words like then, after that, in the end, uh, meanwhile, um, suddenly, okay? All this can be added to enhance fluency, all right? Okay, this is an ex another example of how you can encourage learners to expand their ideas and sen sentences using the 5W1H questions. The 5W1H questions are also known as sentence stretcher questions. Okay, they help to stretch the ideas, help to stretch the sentences. Okay. Yeah, so do make use of the 5W1H questions. Model the um, this questioning technique uh, so that they can also learn to pick up that uh, strategy in helping them to expand their ideas, okay, when they are attempting to do a writing task independently. All right, so to encourage learners to add details, okay, uh, you can actually prepare stretcher cards like these at the end of the tie the ideas together stage of the right approach. So after organizing the ideas in order, okay, in logical order, uh, depending on the, the, on the learner's stamina, okay, um, some learners would already have been exhausted at the end of the uh, tie the ideas together stage. So you might want to do this um, at a different time uh, on another day, okay? Uh, so what you can do is you can put these cards face down. Okay, and learn, what the learner has to do is the learner will have to pick a card. So if the learner picks a light green card, this one, okay, this, this card here, okay, uh, if the learner picks that card, he or she will have to change the phrase, okay, that the learner has written on the post-it at the beginning of the story mountain into a complete sentence containing at least five words, okay? So the learner can actually pick a different card for every post-it. So what this means is that every post-it 
will now have to be revised and represented according to the instructions given on the card that they pick. Okay, so it's a kind of, um, it's, it's like a, a, a game. Okay, you can also turn this into an incentive for the learner to earn points with every successful attempt. Okay. Now, along the way, uh, you probably would have introduced a new word. Okay, do make it a point to explain its meaning clearly. And most importantly, don't just leave it as that because chances are they will forget. All right. So the ultimate goal in teaching, uh, in uh, introducing a new vocabulary, teaching new vocabulary is application in everyday language and of course in writing. So do make it a point that learners keep a record of every new word introduced or used in the writing process so that they can have a chance at reusing, revisiting and reviewing the word in, a subsequent, in subsequent writing tasks. Okay, so they need to use the word often enough before they can automatically access it. Okay. All right. So you won't have realized by now that it takes a lot more effort than typical learners for dyslexic learners to produce a piece of writing work. So do make it a point to acknowledge and praise them for the effort and time invested. Okay. Um, focus on addressing one area of weakness at a time. And uh, turn that into a goal that you can negotiate with uh, him or her uh, for him to work towards achieving. So you can, it can potentially be a self-editing criteria as well. Okay, so the child will be able to apply that knowledge or the skill consistently, not just in English writing tasks, but tasks in other subjects as well. Okay, so um, make the child realize that every skill that they learn Okay, in, in the writing process can be applied in other subjects as well because simply because the other subjects are also taught in English, right? So um, allow the use of assistive technology, be open to creative ideas. And um, I cannot stress the importance of this. Provide multimodal experience, okay? Where the process of writing is not just pen and paper throughout. All right, allow for lots of multi-sensory, tactile, kinesthetic experiences and provide different mediums for presentation throughout the process, such as using tech tools, uh, speech-to-text apps, watching videos, using sticky notes, uh, playing card games, uh, earning rewards, okay? Um, in that way, uh, learners can actually document and track uh, the development of their ideas in, very, uh, in a variety of ways. Okay, having variety actually helps to sustain interest and focus. Okay, make writing an everyday affair, but of course, remember to focus on the content and structure of the message. Okay, so these are some of the ways um, in which you can incorporate um, writing in, uh, in, in everyday activities. Like for example, writing simple instructions, you know, before leaving the house, you, wanna, you want to convey a certain message to a family member, okay? Do, do, do help themselves to, uh, to a post-it note and write it, stick it on the fridge or something, okay? And then um, write simple riddles as part of uh, playing games, um, craft messages for charades, okay? These are also games. All right, uh, you, they can also be a food critic for mummy's cooking. All right, um, text messages are also um, another way to uh, incorporate, to, to routinize writing. Okay, okay, so these are also other ideas you can explore to make writing um, very much a day to day activity. Okay. As you can see there, uh, if, you, if you look at the picture on the right, um, uh, these are actually post-it notes, uh, post-it post ideas that have been accompanied with drawings. So uh, learners uh, need not just have to write the ideas, they can actually draw the ideas on the same post-it notes as well. Okay. Okay. I know that this may be challenging for you to do, but it is also just as important for learners with dyslexia to make it a point to read. Okay. It is only from reading exposure that they can acquire vocabulary and acquaint themselves with samples of good writing. Right. So this is my last slide. And as a parting note, I would like to encourage you to reflect and think about the process of your children and students learning to write, like when they first learn to walk, 
the, their first few steps or climb their first staircase or even ride a bicycle. Okay, it takes a lot of guidance, a lot of patience, practice, perseverance, and certainly a lot of time before they can eventually do all these on their own. Okay, it doesn't happen overnight, right? So like our young learners, adults like us, even adults like us um, are learning every day to be better writers, okay? Writing, I would say, is constantly work in progress, at least for me. I learn from my students as well. So no matter what grades we got in school, we are still writing today in our own unique ways, maybe typing more than writing now, constantly learning from mistakes, but we never give up, right? So that's what we hope to instill in our learners as well. Okay, so I've come to the end of uh, my sharing. Thank you so much for your attention, your time and your patience. You're welcome to ask any questions if you have. I will try my very best to answer them. Thank you so much. Thank you, Siti. Thank you, everyone. I hope you had a full understanding from the session. Now, uh, before we start the Q&A session, we'd like to hear from you as we value your feedback. On the screen now, we have shared our QR code for our feedback form and also links to other DES websites for your reference. Please, we do appreciate if we could spare a minute or two to complete the feedback form for us. Before we end later, we will also be sharing our upcoming courses that will be conducted by DAS Academy. Now we'll move on to our Q&A session now and we'll take uh, probably about uh, 10 minutes or so. Do ask uh, questions that is uh, probably relevant to this session and we'll try our best to answer. Should we run out of time, we will then reply to your queries by email. Now we have our speaker with us live today, uh, Ms. Siti Asmaija. She is a lead educational therapist in DAS and she's also an associate lecturer with DS Academy. Besides teaching, City also conducts uh, workshops and courses catering to parents, educators, and members of the public wishing to know more about specific, specific learning differences. City will be addressing educational questions and I'll be assisting her with uh, questions pertaining to our learning center. So uh, let us begin. So City, uh, there are some questions on the Q&A function. Uh, would you like to get the ball rolling? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, uh, Victor. Um, I have two questions here, which are more or less quite similar. Uh, one of them is about um, can think out of the box, but cannot be in dreamland or outer space, right? Okay, that's one. And then we have another one quite similar along the same lines. Um, how, uh, how do we handle a child with excessive ideas that uh, do not link or ideas that are too crazy? Okay, right. Um, remember that I mentioned about Imagine without borders, right? Okay, yeah. So that is the point where where you will probably the child will probably be expressing lots of his um ideas. So just um remember, just take them down, okay? Um, just have it recorded. Uh, but maybe uh, uh to to help the child, what you can do is to remind him of what his writing goal is. Okay, so this is where, for example, in the context of a a, a writing assignment perhaps a given writing assignment or maybe uh, a given composition uh, topic or given composition um, question, okay? Um, do uh, bring about that awareness in the, uh, in the learner of what exactly is the writing goal uh, through the, the given question, okay? So probably the, the, the question would have established certain guidelines. So um, yeah, do bring your child, uh, your child's attention to those guidelines. And um, yeah, maybe for the for for the for the time being, he can he or she can um, can just brainstorm the ideas first. But your role will come in probably when tying the ideas together. Okay, so when you when you um, helping the the child to tie ideas together, that's when you engage the child in conversations about whether you know this would be relevant. You know, but I think ideas. Um, children. Uh, well, one thing good about children is that um, they have. Um, they have lovely ideas. Sometimes it could be out of the box, but maybe um, uh, you might want to uh, remind him of um, the guidelines provided in the written assignment and what is expected of him to do by the by the teachers to 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 kind of um, create uh, to to kind of like um, uh, have that boundaries established. 
Okay, yes, you can you can imagine, yes, you can you can come up with out of the box ideas, but ultimately there is a goal that you have to adhere to. So that is where you can probably um, um, help your child steer um, in, in, in the direction that you want him to. Okay, thank you so much for the question. Okay. Um, Okay, there's another question that says, um, may I also check, does MLP or P2P teach these strategies? Okay, MLP and P2P are diff slightly different programs. Um, I would say that uh, 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 writing strategies are taught in the MLP, but not in the P2P. Okay, P2P stands for Prep to PSLE. Uh, that program actually focuses more on uh, Paper 2, okay, which is, which is where the... Um, comprehension section is comprehension and close passage all right and um and but uh, the uh, uh writing strategies would be covered extensively in the mlp program so not to worry all right okay um is there any software that can aid dyslexic with reading okay um i have another question that that's asking um yes um Reading is definitely important, but to encourage your child, uh, especially if your child is, uh, is struggling to read uh, efficiently or struggling to read fluently, um, do, do let him have access to readers or audiobooks, okay? Or um, books, online books. There are lots of uh, sites actually that have uh, books um, where the stories are read to the reader, okay? So you may start uh, with that. Um, and then slowly, you know, uh, progress him to, um, to attempting to read on his own. Okay, maybe uh, what you, this is where your involvement is very important. Okay, uh, so once you have hooked him with audiobooks and perhaps um, online storybooks where uh, the stories are read to him, then you can slowly encourage and progress him to reading together with you so that is when you can negotiate your roles okay maybe uh, you can tell him okay for today let's try to read this uh, this book that you have chosen I will read the first page or maybe I'll read the first sentence and you will read the next sentence okay so have um, that sort of arrangement uh, to slowly build that reading fluency okay and um, is this right approach aligned Okay, hang on. Now, is it possible to use this right approach in school's written composition exam? Okay, the right approach is actually, um, I would say, um, it is uh, it is more uh, catered to struggling writers. Okay, so um, I would say that um, struggling writers would need a lot of time. Okay, so it would be great if... Um, uh, a lot of time is given for the writer, a lot of lead time is given for, 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 for the child uh, to produce a piece of writing. So that, that lead time will enable um, whoever is guiding the, the, the writer, the, the, the student, okay, to embark on the right, to engage in the right approach okay, before uh, gradually leading up to producing um, a piece of writing. But we have to, um, I think for struggling writers, we have to manage our expectations um, depending on the baseline ability of the learner, all right? Um, I guess for, for struggling writers, we really have to, we really have, we cannot expect wonderful and intact uh, a piece of writing. Maybe for, for the right approach for beginners, uh, if he can, um, if he is able to just write one, set, one sentence at each stage of the story mountain, that will be good enough. Okay, so you know, gradually uh, uh, move your expectations as in like, um, uh, you have to develop the skills bit by bit, okay? You can't have um, everything, um, uh, all the skills taught uh, in, in, in a, within a short uh, span of time, okay? You have to give them time uh, to develop that automaticity before moving on to teaching a new skill. So it's, it's really incremental, all right? Yeah, I hope that answers the question. <laughs> okay, um... Is this right approach aligned? Okay, is this right approach aligned with the approach that MOE schools are applying? Okay, I would say that um, MOEs, where MOE schools are concerned, uh, they do have um, a specific uh, uh, structure, a specific specific set of guidelines to help learners. But these are, 
I would say more catered to typical learners, okay, typical writers who have already, who already have certain established skills. Okay, certain skills are already intact. Okay, like for example, vocabulary, spelling, they are all actually able to express themselves, uh, uh, write words um, with uh, 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 good spelling structures, with good grammatical structures. Okay, but for learners with dyslexia, um, uh, you would already have understood by now that they are actually quite, quite, um, they need more support. Okay, so the right approach is actually more catered to support struggling like, uh, writers. Okay. Um, let's see, which apps were mentioned? Um, okay, I talked about, um, okay, when you are, when you're trying to help learners uh, pen down, okay, the, the words, you can actually use um, speech to text apps. Okay, um, I mentioned about the uh, Chrome speech to text apps. Uh, you can actually install that. Uh, otherwise, if the child is using, um, is, has his own uh, mobile phone, uh, there's this free uh, live transcribe uh, app which you can which you can actually help to download for him. If he has, uh, he, if he thinks of a word and he, he knows what to write, what word to use, he can actually just um, say it and uh, the live transcribe app will actually spell out the word for him. So this reduces that, that, that mental uh, stress of having to, to write down um, the word uh, accurately, okay? Okay. Thank you, Siti. Uh, yeah, thank you. Time, maybe we can take uh, one more question before we do a closing. Uh, so for uh, our participants who have posted uh, their multiple questions, questions. <laughs> Yep. Yeah, however, in view of time, uh, we can only take one more for the remaining questions. Uh, not to worry, we will be uh, responding to you by email. So do give us a few days uh, for us to populate the questions and then uh, my colleagues will be responding to you by email. So uh, maybe Siti, one more question before we wrap up. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Victor. Um, I would like to address this question. Is there a vocab list for kids to learn? I would say for um, struggling writers, um, you may want to focus on um, high-frequency words. Okay, high-frequency words. Um, and the other, uh, the other list of words that you may want to um, provide for your child is uh, theme words, thematic words common thematic words, like for example, what are the words that are usually used in accidents, for example? What are words that are usually used in maybe um, uh, robbery or burglary or, um, yeah, uh, these are very context uh, specific uh, words that you can actually be, uh, you can actually um, uh, give, provide to learners uh, so that they uh, they, they get familiar and they can use it. But uh, they may not know how to spell, but it would, it would, be, it would be nice if you can have uh, maybe a short list. For example, if you have words like um, related to accidents, you can have words like injury, you can have words like fracture. Okay, so do have those, those words um, provided. Okay, yeah. Yeah, I think uh, I will address the rest of the questions uh, by email. Thank you. Yes, thank you, Siti. Yeah, thank you for uh, the questions uh, coming in. Keep them flowing. We will address uh, the questions by email. Yeah. So um, before we wrap up, so just to share a little on the upcoming DA DAS Academy courses, uh, we have three that's uh, lined up for this month. This will be shown on the screen shortly. The first one it's a developing. Developing Writing in Students with uh, Specific Learning Difficulties. Uh, this workshop, we aim to help parents and uh, teachers to acquire strategies to help primary school SPLD learners to become more fluent and motivated writers. And this will be conducted on the 10th of July. Registration, uh, as indicated, will be ending on the 7th of July. So the next one that is, uh, will be on the 17th of July, it's a coping with spelling, and this will provide an understanding of why learners with dyslexia find spelling difficult. And to allow our participants uh, attending the, this uh, workshop to be more aware of the skills and knowledge needed to spell English words and also helping our uh, children on this. 
Um, the participants, participants will, of course, uh, gain skills in supporting learners with dyslexia to spell phonetic and non-phonetic words through a multi-sensory approach. Uh, closing date for this, it's on the 14th of July. And the last one that we have lined up on uh, in July, which on 24th, it's understanding phonics instructions. This will allow participants to understand the importance of phonics instructions and phonological awareness, especially for learners who are struggling uh, uh, with uh, specific learning difficulties. Again, this we have, will share some activities that we can use at home or in school. Um, all these courses, uh, these are paid courses, and, and uh, there are, of course, uh, some uh, subsidy that's available, and this can be through two avenues. One is uh, if you look at our RETA webpage, which is www.reta.sg, the RETA is basically an uh, organization that we bring together practitioners in the field of specific learning difficulties and education. And uh, RITA, by the way, it stands for Register of Educational Therapists Asia. You don't have to be an educator in order to join because there are different tiers in this RITA. Uh, but by joining, of course, uh, you will gain access to more resources that we can help children with learning difficulty. So the website again is www.reta.sg. By signing up again, uh, there will be discount vouchers that uh, is available to be used when joining DAS Academy courses. The next, uh, just to share quickly, we also have got the CTG, which is Caregivers Training Grant. Some of the DAS Academy courses are eligible for CTG. So again, do go into our website, DAS Academy website, and there will be some instructions on this, uh, which courses are uh, available and uh, which this uh, CTG fund can be used. Like. So more details can be found on the website uh, for your reading at your, at your convenience. So this brings us to today's uh, webinar. Thank you everyone for attending and uh, I hope that this has been helpful. We do run such webinars through the years, uh, probably each month. Yeah, do go to our website, DS uh, Academy, and you will be able to find the details of the next uh, session. The next session will be held on 5th of August, which is on a Thursday, 12.30, same time. It is entitled, I Understand What I Read. So for more details, do visit our website for the information. Again, thank you for joining us today. And uh, we hope to see you in our coming webinars and courses that's held in DS Academy. Have a good afternoon ahead. Thank you.